Hey there, uh, welcome back. So today we're going to talk about the parts of a script. Uh, I have a little interstitial part between the last one and this one that talks about where you can get any of the software I use in this. I'm going to be using Unity and I'm going to be using Visual Studio 2017 for Mac. Um, both of those are free for you to use. Unity is free if your business makes less than $100,000 per year for the personal edition. Uh, if you want to do the pro edition, it's a monthly fee. Uh, up to $250,000 a year for your business. And then after that, they have, um, actually, I think it's plus is that other one. After that, they have pro and they have enterprise options. But for 98% of the people who are watching this video, you're going to be using personal and personal will fit you just fine. Uh, Visual Studio can also just be downloaded from the Microsoft website. So um, here's the new project page. I'm going to change my project name to intro to C. Uh, I'm going to store mine in my documents folder. You can choose wherever you want to store it and just have your projects there. Uh, sometimes it's a good idea in your documents fold in your documents folder to have a unity projects folder that you're keeping stuff in or you know keep it separated. I'm going to use a 2D template because most of what I want to talk about is only going to use 2D. Uh, even if you create a 2D template you can switch your stuff over to 3D and vice versa if you create a 3D template you can switch stuff over to 2D. Um, I'm not going to add any asset packages, so I'm just going to hit create project. This is going to take a second to load up so you can look at my super messy desktop there. Um, and once it's loaded up, I will meet you back here. So this is the default layout for Unity. Uh, starting with Unity 2018, they are now actually naming that first scene that you make, and it comes with a scenes folder that has your what they by default call sample scene. So right now, if you want to, you can click Save Scenes and it'll save before you would have had to decide a name for your scene and a save location for it, but Unity's kind of uh, made that just a little bit simpler. Uh, this is the default layout, and this is not the layout that I like to use, but I will change it later. For now, uh, I don't really want to mess around too much with the Unity editor itself. I want to save that for a later video. Right now I want to talk more about scripts. So down here in my assets folder, I'm going to create a new folder. So create folder, and I'm going to call this folder scripts. And then inside my scripts folder, I'm going to create a new C sharp script. Uh, I'm just going to call this, how about we just call it intro? Because this mainly exists just for me to uh, show you some things. So I'm going to open the script up uh, right now, my default is set to be Visual Studio. Uh, 2018 on Visual Studio is the default. They're not using Mono Develop anymore, but if you're using 2017 or 5, then um, it'll open in Mono Develop, and it's essentially the exact same thing. So it's no big worries if you're using Mono Develop versus Visual Studio. So I'm going to let this open, and I will catch you back here. Okay. So this is what a script looks like. I'm going to embiggen this a bit so that everybody can see it. Now, there are certain parts of a Unity script, and we're going to kind of go through each of these individually. First, there's the namespaces. So a namespace serves two purposes. And the first purpose is to allow the script access to certain commands and certain libraries. So in this case, this script has access to anything that's in the system collections, anything that's in system collections generic, which is lists and stuff, and anything that's in Unity Engine. So any of the Unity Engine commands are now going to work in here. Same thing with any of the generic commands and any of the collections commands. Um, this is what most of you are going to think of as a namespace. However, there could be another definition for namespace. So before a class begins, you could have a namespace, and I could call this intro as well. And this namespace could encapsulate my entire class. In fact, you could encapsulate two or three classes in here. Um, this namespace is not super often used um, in Unity, at least not as far as I've seen, unless your project gets really complicated. What a namespace serves to do is it allows you to separate a class that you might want two of that have the same name. By having one of those or both of those in their own namespace, you're then changing the name of the class. This isn't just intro anymore. 
if I wanted to call this from another script, I'd call it as intro, my bigger namespace, dot intro, the class name. This is similar to how you would call a method from a class. So this is also what namespaces are between the using tags and this. But I'm just going to get rid of that because, again, most of what we're going to be doing isn't going to require that. Uh, one handy thing that a lot of people don't know, uh, I want this to be kind of unindented over there. So if I highlight everything I want to move over, uh, right click, I'm going to choose unindent, and it'll just move everything over one tab space. Okay, so namespace, next is the class. And that's the name of the class right here. So I named my class intro. Now, one thing that happens a lot with new users to Unity is they'll, when they're creating a new script, they'll right click, they'll right click choose create C sharp script, and then click away and then try to go back to the script and give it a name. So they would go back here and give it a name like, I don't know, you might want to call this script Stan. Now, the problem with this is there's an error that's happening here. Uh, if I open up Stan and look at it in Visual Studio, uh, I'm going to just overwrite, that's fine. So if I look at Stan, Stan is a new behavior script. The class does not match the file name. And if the class doesn't match the file name, Unity isn't going to be able to use it. So you always want to make sure that if you do that, if you create a new script, click away, and then try to click back and rename it, that either you make sure to change the class name so that it matches the file name, or just do it again. So anyway, uh, the class is the name of the um, main piece of code that you're working with here. And then what comes after the call or the um, uh, colon is what this class is inheriting from, meaning what it's a child of. And when classes inherit from certain things, they gain certain aspects. In this case, it's gaining mono behavior aspects. And as far as Unity is concerned, mono behavior is things like the awake and start method, the fixed update and late update methods, as well as the on enable and on destroy methods. And there's some others in there about rendering and stuff, but those are the ones that mainly get used. Uh, also, if a script inherits from mono behavior, it can be attached to a game object. Now, you can create what's called an inheritance tree, where you can have a script inherit from mono behavior. You can have another script inherit from that one, and that one will still inherit from mono behavior because it's like a grandchild of mono behavior at that point. This happens a lot when you want to deal with inheritance. Um, it's one of the best parts of object-oriented programming is you can have traits of certain scripts be passed down to other scripts that are maybe defined from that. Uh, one of the examples that I often give my students is you could have a, a class uh, called square, and the square class could inherit from rectangle. The square has everything in it that makes a rectangle a rectangle, but it also has some extra stuff. And you could make another class called like uh, parallelogram that does not inherit from rectangle, but instead inherits from four-sided figure. Um, so this is the class. Now, next, usually scripts will have um, variable declarations. Those will almost always go in between the class and the first method, although they don't have to. Um, that's just going to be the easiest place for you to see it. So if you're creating any kind of variables, those go here in general. Um, if you put them here, they're global variables and can be accessed by any method in the script. You can also create what are called local variables that are inside of specific methods. Those can only be accessed by that method. Um, usually, you would have a main method. However, since Unity uses mono behavior and kind of has its own ecosystem set up, your main method would kind of be replaced by your update and start method. The start method is what happens uh, when the program is initiated and then the update method is something that happens every frame and most computers will draw frames of animation 30 to 60 times a second so your update method will get called 30 to 60 times a second which can cause some problems um, depending on how you're thinking about things if you have different frame rates on different devices and there are ways to fix that so that everything runs the same no matter how many frames per second it's rendering so there we go now um, the other things that are part of a script, aside from variables in these main methods here, would be 
any self-defined method. So I could create a new void that I'll call do stuff. And this new method is also part of the script. I can have as many of these method methods in one script as I want. However, in general, one of the principles of object-oriented programming is that you want to have each script have one purpose. So you don't want to have a ton of different methods in one script, even though for a lot of programs you could. Um, for example, if you're running something as simple as like Pong or Tetris, you could run that entire program from inside one class. It would be a little bit of a mess and stuff wouldn't be delineated like it should be, but you absolutely could do that. Uh, however, in object-oriented programming, it's better to have one purpose for every class and then have any object that has those classes have one purpose as well so that they can kind of fit together like, uh, like little Lego bricks. So, yeah. Uh, one thing that's true about C-sharp that you want to make sure that you're paying attention to, and this, believe me, I've had students who at the end of the year are still making this error, um, C sharp um, doesn't know when a thought is ended unless you put a semicolon. So for example, if I were to type on here, let's make a public float. Um, I don't know, I'm just gonna call it floaty. Uh, and then put a semicolon there. C sharp doesn't read any of this white stuff even though it knows about the lines. I could take uh, all of this uh, and just kind of like jam it all together. So if I get rid of this comment here, because the comment's going to take everything else away, um, I could take my void start, put it right there. I could put this there. I could put uh, this there. I could get rid of this comment and put my update method directly behind that last one. And C sharp doesn't know the difference. It would run this code exactly the way that it would run anything else. So I can just keep like just jamming all of this stuff onto uh, one line if I wanted to. And that one line can go on for, you know, as long as you want it to. C sharp sees no difference between this and what I had earlier. So one thing that you want to make sure that you're doing is leaving yourself enough white space to actually understand what's happening. So it's good to try to be a little neat with your programming. There are many ways that you can be sloppy in programming. Uh, not leaving enough white space is only one of them. So yeah. All right. So this was just kind of a brief overview of exactly what a script is. Um, we'll talk more about variables next time. We'll talk about the different variable types. Uh, how to access those from Unity, and we'll also talk a little bit about how the Unity editor is laid out and how you can find what you want. So if you have any questions, please feel free to leave those in the comments down below. Um, if you learned anything, please feel free to give me a like. If you didn't learn anything, you can still feel free to give me a like. No one's going to, you know, yell at you if you do that. Um, otherwise, you can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post new videos, and have yourself a wonderful day.